And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today I'm taking a look at a new card game called Banco Banco, or Banco Banco. Not really sure of the actual pronunciation of it, but this is a card game. And while many card games boxes come with some cards inside, this one has a lot of cards inside of various colors and shapes and numbers. But it's not a trick-taking game, it's not a set collection game. It's really unlike any other game I've played. Let me show you how it works. Each player places eight cards in front of them, yellow, blue, red, green, doesn't matter the order. Each, the front four cards are considered banks. The back four cards are considered vaults. Each player is gonna have a handful of five cards. These cards have denominations from one to eight and are in four different colors, red, yellow, green, and blue. There's also special cards of each of the colors. So there are one, there's six different special cards, one of each color. A player is going to have a handful of five of these cards, and on your turn, the first thing you do is you ask somebody else if they have a specific card. So I can say, do you have a green card? And if you ask me that question, I'd say yes, and I have to give you a green card. Or you could say, do you have a four? And I could say, no, I don't. Now realize, in this game, there's a lot more ones than there are eights. There's only one eight of each color, while there's eight ones of a color. There's eight twos of a color, six threes, six fours, four fives, three sixes, two sevens, and one eight. I could even ask for a special card, a Banco card, which are the ones with the different symbols, and if you had that, you have to give it to me. After I do that, I have two different actions. The actions can be putting a card into a vault, putting a card into a bank, putting a card into my personal vault. That means just placing it to the side uh, in a personal vault section where I will keep those cards, and for another action, I can discard all the cards in my hand and take the cards in the vault and put them in my hand. It's a way to save cards for a future turn. I'm also allowed to discard a card and draw a new one. So those are the actions, but the important part of this game is how do you play cards in the vaults and the banks? Both are played differently. Let's look at the vaults first. When you play a card in the vault, the first card that's played in that vault can be any card you want. After that, each card must either be the same number or higher and also has to match one of the, or the, the color of the card. This is a blue card, for example. For me to play this here, there needs to be a blue symbol there, and there is, so I can play a blue two there. I could play a red three on top of this because it's red and it's higher than a two. I can no longer play a, a lower number, but I, I can play threes here. I could then play a four on top of that. I can't play a five here, but I couldn't play this particular five because this five is yellow and this symbol only has green and red symbols. So as you can see, pretty easy to play cards into the vault. And it's important because cards and vaults will be points for you at the end of the game. For the vaults, cards are played a little differently. You can play any cards you want into a vault for the first card. It just has to be a different color than the color of the vault. Each card that you play after that has to be a higher number and is a different color than the previous one. So I played a yellow two, a red three, here is a green seven. So I played three cards. The fourth card has to be one of these special Banco cards. These cards can't go in the vaults. They only go here in the banks. So in the bank, you're gonna be playing four different cards, one of each color, and the last one has to match the color here. They also have to be ascending, and the last one has to be a Banco card. Once you do that, that bank Close, once you finish a bank, every vault of that color is closed. So if players have uh, numbers in that one, you turn them over, that vault's closed. Not only mine, but every other player's vault is also closed. When all the vaults of all four colors are closed, the game will be over. Now even though finishing up a bank will shut down all the vaults, other players can still finish up that bank themselves because they might want the special ability of the card that they play in it. Each card has a different special ability. If you have this one on one of your vaults, you can pick up your special vault and it doesn't count as an action. This one doubles the points of your associated uh, vault. So all the points in my green vault would be doubled. 
This adds 10 points to all those of my yellow vault. When I, this one, when I ask people questions, rather than asking for a specific number, I can say, give me a, something that is a three or higher, or I could say something that's less than a four. This one here lets me give someone else one of my cards and then randomly take one of their cards. And this one here, when, at, at the end of my turn, I can discard as many cards as I want before I draw back up to five. So that's really how the game works. Once all the vaults have been shut, people add their points, doing anything special thanks to their bank cards, and the player with the most points is the winner of the game. Now perhaps those watching have seen a game like this, but I haven't. I mean, obviously the beginning's a little bit like Go Fish. Do you have a blue? No. Go Fish. No. But, I mean, really though, that's an interesting part of the game because as you watch the cards people put down, sometimes you can kind of figure out what kind of card they have in your hand. More often than not, though, there's a card you desperately need, and so you will ask other players to see if they have it. The game works well as a two-player game, actually, but also can play multiplayers and go up to four players. It actually fits kind of a sweet spot at three players. And it takes a bit to teach people because you're constantly have to reminding them the vault cards increasing order different colored cards. The uh, I mean, bank cards, I'm sorry. The vault cards increasing order or the same number and has to match the symbol. It would have been nice maybe if they had some little reference cards in the game to help people who were new to it. Also, the special cards, the symbols, except for the times two and plus ten, those make sense, easy. The rest, you always have to look them up because you can never remember what does the red X do, what does the circle do. I know they're trying to make the game language dependent, but it was constantly, what do those cards do? Those Banco cards, since there's only 24 of them in the deck, and there is, uh, I, I don't know how many cards are in this deck completely. There's quite a few cards in here. Um, and so getting those is really important, and you want to save those because you can't play them right away. You can only play them to close... Uh, one of the banks and you don't necessarily want to close a bank too early because it might shut your vault down and you want to have a chance to get as many points in it. The game has strategy. You see someone filling up their yellow vault. Maybe you want to shut that yellow vault down before they get too many points. Uh, it's still a light game and as you draw cards there's still luck. Sometimes you get exactly the card you need. Sometimes you don't. Obviously there's colors in the game. Uh, each of the colors has different backgrounds on it. So if you are colorblind, for example, the, the red cards have triangles and the green cards have squares in the background. It's a minor thing, but it is a helpful thing to people who have a hard time differentiating between the colors, and that's a nice thing. Um, not an intuitive game, but certainly a fascinating one. Now, I didn't fall in love with this game, but I enjoyed it, and I liked the fact that it pushed the boundaries and tried something new. So, who am I recommending this for? Anybody who just watched this review and thinks that sounds interesting, because I don't know the category of people that I would recommend this for. It certainly is a little thinky, but at the same time, it's kind of light. You can kind of talk and have a good time. It's certainly one where you need to watch what your opponents are doing, but at the same time, you're working and building up numbers and of yourself. So, um, there you go. That's a very loose recommendation, really. Uh, but if you think that's a game that interests you, Banco Banco, check it out. Even the box has four different colors. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door! Boo? Boo?